On today's show, we're going to be talking about cryptocurrency. Then Gabby's going to go to Nam. Plus, we're going to have guests Calve and Brandon Laracuente. It's all going down on the zoo. Shoulder shake, shoulder shake, and I'll twerk. Oh, 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 oh,
for I need them for the strippers tonight. The strippers? Yes. Of course. They'll take any type of currency. The strippers. Even Can you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> Hold on, I'm, I'm tipping you. I'm, t I'm sending, I'm tipping you. The super will be like, oh, huh? Well, let me tell you, the other day I went to the nail, uh, to the eyebrow salon, and I asked a girl, I was like, I don't have any cash. Like, do you take any other sort of, you know, tip, uh, she tip did in not a way? Bitcoin. No, she did, did not say Bitcoin. On credit card? But, no, she said, you can Venmo it to me. Yeah. So I'm just like, you know, now Bitcoin could be like another way of, of receiving a tip. Even oh. for strippers. <laughs> <laughs> With the phone. Okay, so what else What else futuristic is happening that I'm like, whoa. whoa. Well, what I'm noticing a lot now, though, is that people uh, don't even, like, use their actual physical credit card to pay for stuff. They're, they have it stored on oh, yeah, their the cell phone. That is more hackable. I'm sorry. And boom. But that's boom. more hackable. I mean, they I use Venmo and stuff. I do, but I, and PayPal, but still, that's more hackable, I think. Yeah? I mean, I think ben anything Bitcoin. that is digital that isn't, like, Oh, Bitcoin possible. also can't be traced. So How? that's why you can buy drugs on the dark web with Bitcoin. Oh, wow. I remember hearing okay, well, about Okay, thanks for letting over. people know that. Wait. Ahora sí, va a comenzar toda la droga. <laughs> no, they know. Ahora sí. Who do you think lets us know? It's the audience that writes into me and saying, hey, oh, you know what? Oh, talk yes. about this okay. Dang. So, yes. Bitcoin, crypto. What do you think about the name cryptocurrency? Isn't this crypto I mean, I, I actually really like that name. I think of like Tales it. of the Crypt, and that's yeah. probably why I don't trust this type of currency. Do you remember the, you remember the, the host of Tales from the Crypt? Yeah, it was a skeleton. <laughs> How right? young am I? You're very young. But I was like really young when I watched this, so let's not age myself, okay? This was, I was like, I mean, there was one of those shows that was you're it like. Was like in the 90s? It was, yeah, it was in the 90s. Okay. I believe so. The early 90s. Uh, okay, early 90s. Early to mid 90s. Okay. okay. Like, and it would air like what, Saturday? But it, it, it would repeat a lot. It would repeat a lot, yeah. You yes. just don't watch repeats. You like new shows. I, yeah, whatever's on Netflix, really. Do you, what's, the, like... what's the movie you've seen the most in your life? Cinderella? Oh, my uh, The gosh. Lion King. Did you see the live action one? Yes, and then that. Why not? I loved it. It's kind of really? creepy when you see yeah. What, did you guys see Cats? No. No, God, no, man. Creepy as hell. I'm sorry. Really? I heard. And I'm not a cat person. Oh, Although I wouldn't spend I'll, any crypto But even though I'm not movie. a cat person, I, didn't, I, I, I had to go like this uh, watching Don't Kill Cats on Netflix. Guys, okay. we're going to be right back. Uh, Gabby went to Nam, and she'll explain what Nam stands for. And Gabby went to NAM, which is like one of those conferences about music and stuff, but uh, she doesn't know what NAM is. No, it's long. It's what? the National Association of Music uh... Makers. No, no, hold on. Uh, oh, right, there you go. Duh, because they're selling all the instruments. <laughs> National Association of Musical uh, Merchants. Music oh, merchants? Yeah. What's a merchant? I haven't heard that word in the <laughs> century. We like to keep it old school in the yeah. NAM. You know. So what'd you do there? Um, so I interviewed a few artists, which I'm not gonna lie, I've been kicking out since I've interviewed. Can I say? Can like, I say? Oh, yeah. 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 Okay, because you guys are gonna see it. Uh, I interviewed Juanes. Um, Why he was there? I'm sweating right now, just talking about it. Yo, Wait, like, he's a merchant too? <laughs> no, fool, he's a musician. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. So he did. He was uh, working with Gibson, like they collaborate or whatever. Oh, nice. And so yeah, I did a lot. I did uh, Jane Marcos. I um, mm. interviewed Gustavo, which I always butchered his last name. Santa, Santa Olena. No, 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 say it. Sino. Santa Laia, 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 yeah. There you go. Thank you so much. Yeah. Anyways, he was amazing. So I saw both of them perform. Uh, Juanes did also like a collaboration with Los Lobos. You guys oh, know nice. about Los yeah. Lobos. Were you yeah. nervous when you talking to Juanes? Was I? Oh my God. Was Luis, he nice? He was so sweet. Like Luis, literally, I was like right next to him. I was freaking out right before. I was like, oh my God, I cannot believe I'm going to interview Juanes right now. I cannot believe it. And so, anyways, I go up to him and I say hi, and then Luis. The, you know, Luis. Yeah. Yeah. He he tells him in front Producer. of me. He's kind of like, oh, um, she's nervous. Just letting you know she's nervous. And he was so sweet about it. So he made me feel really comfortable. It Aww. went great. I'm talking really fast right now. Yeah. Do you yeah. know how I make <laughs> wow. people? You know, like, if I notice somebody's nervous when they're talking to me, which never happens, do you know how I make them at ease? How? I let out a little fart. Ew! Oh, <laughs> <pobrecita> la <laughs> la no, I go. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and they're going to take you seriously like that. For some reason, everyone that I know that lives in Reseda loves fart jokes. What? I don't know why. Who are these people? Because they're having barbecues every week, and they're not eating enough fiber. Ew. Or they are eating enough fiber. They have frijoles with everything. So, yeah. you know, I have a Jamaican friend, and she has a thing called Does Yeah she Bomb Soup. And, and I, I learned how to cook it. It's with squash, potatoes. Um, uh, well, you put a habanero pepper in it, but you can't touch it with your hands because then you... You, I, you know that I touch the habanero pepper, and then Why I go... Why would you do that? You, okay, you but you know what? We're getting... I know, you got to do that. We're All right, topic. Send us away. Yeah. Gabby, send it off to yourself at Nam so people can see what you did. Check it out. Me at Nam. Ooh. 
What better way to start off 2020 than here at the NAMM show in Anaheim at the Convention Center. People from all over the world come here to check out all the good stuff about music, whether it's keyboards, guitars, microphones. So we're going to go inside. Vamos a ver qué tienen para nosotros. Let's go inside and check it out. Oh my gosh, I suck. But we're going to do it. Anyways, here we go. What's up, guys? We are back here at the NAMM show with Gianmarco. Hey, what's up, LATV? Okay, okay. Long time to see you. Long time no see. So you have had an interview with LATV before? Yes. When was that? I, I remember when whilst I was doing some promotion in 2003. I was living in Miami, and then I came here. I came to LA 2003. I remember. Yeah, 2003. Now, huge, big set, TV set. It was, it was fun. What kind of collaborations do you have going on this year for 2020? Get plan is like. Bueno, right now we're gonna have, we're gonna release a first single, the January 24th. I used to record albums. Okay. Pero se puso de moda los sencillos. Okay, sí, es cierto. <laughs> <laughs> Así que this year with my with my team we decided to we're gonna release um, like about six singles. Okay. The first one, uh, it's uh, it's gonna release on January 24th. ¿Y cómo se llama? Se llama Empezar de nuevo. Yo soy el, el miembro fundador de Difonía, eh, com, compongo la música y las letras de, de Difonía. En realidad nuestras influencias son bastante similares, a todos nos gusta como que Metallica, Guns N' Roses, Nirvana, este, Nirvana o sea, Blink-182, ¿no? Entonces tenemos gustos bien eclécticos, ¿no? Que yo creo que también le da bastante riqueza al sonido de nosotros, ¿no? Y en resumen, somos una banda de rock, todos tenemos varias influencias y un poco tratamos de... De, que, de, de crear un mix, ¿no? Que en realidad, sin ninguna pretensión, simplemente es la música que nos salió y, y lo consideramos que es rock. What's up, guys? We are here at NAM Show with Juanes. Hola, ¿cómo Hola, ¿cómo estás? ¿Cómo estás? Okay, All right, so... Tenemos aquí una colaboración con Los Lobos y Gibson. ¿Cómo inició yes. todo eso? Yes, uh, I'm very happy to be here. You know, um, I am having, you know, working with Gibson family, I don't know, since like three, four years ago, like closely, because before that, of course, I, I one of my first electric guitar was a Gibson Les Paul. When I came to LA, I don't know, back in 97, maybe. <laughs> El primer concierto que yo fui, digamos, de, de grupos que me gustaban, de Kraken o de Iron Maiden o de Carlos Vives, incluso cuando yo yo, yo quiero estar ahí. Y ahí estaba. Y, y ahí estuve después. <risa> después, pero... <coughs> bueno, ¿y proyectos de 2020? ¿Qué hay? Bueno, muchos, muchos eh, conciertos. Vamos a, a girar mucho con este nuevo álbum que salió en noviembre. Y, y muchas gracias. Y también estoy componiendo mucha música nueva, grabando, ¿sabes? Como haciendo de todo al mismo tiempo, eh, pero más que todo música y viajes. Bueno, perfecto. Mm. Muchísimas gracias, Juanes. Hola chicos, we are here with none other than Gustavo. Okay, Gustavo, oh my God, I just saw your set. Incredible, Thank incredible. You so much. Thank you. What do you have plans for 2020? Anything new, anything solo or with your group? Lot of, lot, lot, lots of things. I mean, I'm working, we just, you know, we released a new album with Bajo Fondo, Aura. So we did a little tour in uh, Argentina and Uruguay, but we're planning to do more touring of that. But I'm also playing at the Vive Latino with my solo uh, stuff, my solo project, which I'm going to go in, to Europe in the summer. So the stereo, you know, they're doing the guys, Charlie and, and Seta are doing a tour, and I'm going to be one of the guests there too. Oh my, uh, oh my god, you have a busy 2020 coming up. Yeah, working also on the uh, video game that I do the music for, which is uh, The Last of Us. 
And that's a wrap for now, 2020. As you guys saw, I met so many amazing, incredible artists. It is just this vibe here at NAMM that you can't even explain unless you are here. Thank you so much for Gibson for having us and all of the artists for giving me the opportunity to interview you guys and talk to you guys and just get to know you guys a little bit more personally. I had a great time. I will see you guys next time. Ciao. find out all the deep dark secrets of Hollywood. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> really? next guest, yes. Carrera, who is here from the Latin tracking board. I don't that sounds a little suspicious to me. I don't know. Is it just me? I don't I can't talk about yeah. it at all. You're gonna talk about it in a second. No, we won't, but let's go. Let's take us out, right? Okay, three, two, one. Wow. wow. Oh, we're not gonna talk about the Latin tracking board. Let's just talk about what we generally talk about. And you've gotten very involved behind the scenes in trying to connect Latino writers, producers, actors with the industry. Yes. Um, and a lot of Latino executives you bring in and kind of connect us with, sometimes it's, it's American people. Why did you feel that you had to start connecting people behind the scenes in Hollywood? Why has this turned into your mission? Um, you know, it's really funny. Like, it didn't really start with like a big sweeping like goal for me. What happened to me was I, I'm from Ecuador and I just really missed living in Latin America. Wow. Um, and I kept hearing these tidbits of how growing Hispanic population in the United States and Latino audiences are just so bankable. And um, in the meantime, I was just by myself in Los Angeles. I knew no other Latinos. I'd wow. lived there for like three years at this point um, and I was like okay well where are they and also like where are my people they're here at LATV <laughs> <they're here. laughs> where did you start, what, what kind of jobs did you start taking when you first moved here did you want to be a performer or you you wanted to be behind the scenes I always wanted to be behind the scenes like I always wanted to be like either a filmmaker or a producer but I wasn't sure what positions even existed so I you know I got a job in management so I worked for a manager who represented actors writers and directors mm. and then eventually I would get a job at a really great production company and just start learning the ins and outs of how to make a TV show from script to screen wow. and while I was getting that instruction um, I as an immigrant you know realized because I'm not a refugee so it's not right. like I left my country right. and was like never again no like I applied here for college came here then stayed here gotcha. um, but once you realize you're never going you're really never going back like this wow. is kind of where you're gonna you can never go home again yeah and I can yeah. but like but because of what I want to do professionally in right. my life and like any anything in life like all the ingredients just start pointing into a certain direction I realized I'm never gonna go back and I was so eager to leave to pursue financial opportunity that I never appreciated how beautiful Latin America was mm. and how unique it is True. and how even in the most exciting moments in Los a in the United States, it's just never going to be the same for me mm. uh, in the sense that I, I didn't realize just how beautiful and vibrant and unique that part of the world let, is. Let, let me ask you this because, you know, you, you, you are privy to management companies and, and, you know, a lot of the, the major agencies and all that stuff and a, a lot of the major networks and producers. So you hear them kind of give us what I say, the lip service, that mm -hmm. yes, Latinos are bankable, they're growing all this stuff. And we are seeing more, I'm not going to lie, we're seeing more Latino characters, Latino storylines and all that stuff. But it's still, we're still so underrepresented disproportionately when compared to even other uh, minorities. Are, are, are you seeing, are we getting over that threshold yet? Or do you still kind of see like what I feel where it's like we're getting the, yeah, we're getting a lot of lip service. Yeah, you want to bank on us, you want to help us out, but we're still not getting, you know, the right amount of opportunities. Like, how, what do you feel the status is right now when it comes to Latin stories and Latin characters in the general market of American media? Well, so the reason that I, I started wanting to connect with other Latinos was just because I didn't think there were that many of us. Wow. So I was like, I never met. I never. I met Here like, in LA. In Hollywood. Okay. Right. In Hollywood, like, okay, and okay. of course, like, there's Univision. Like, yes, right. there are absolutely outlets. But um, in the side of the business that I was working on, I worked at Scott Free Productions, which is Ridley Scott's production company. Wow. And in that side of the business, like, I just really hadn't met a lot of mm -hmm. uh, Latinos, and so. I met people through mutual friends. I cold called companies that I knew had Latin employees in it. And I was able to pool a small group of friends that we became very tight with. And we were like, let's just have an event once a month so we can just meet and bring other True. Latinos because we hear that there's potential. We've seen with Eugenio Derbez that there's financial potential. Right. Yes. Um, but the truth is no one's doing anything about it. And I think part of it is what you're saying. We're like, it's lip service, really. 
Um, and everything is lip service. It's the same plight that women are dealing with in Hollywood, where like, I'm sure that you, as a, as a, as a woman of color, you, you see it in both ways, where like, there's lip service for the POCs, and then there's lip service for the women, but neither gap is being closed. Yeah, exactly. Right? So, <laughs> I realize that, yes, I'm sure that there is a very pervasive system that is purposely keeping us outside, um, but it's also just Hollywood. Everyone's overworked, everyone's underpaid, mm -hmm. no one has time for an extracurricular activities, and to open the door for Latinos, that's something someone has to do, Right. and people who aren't Latin don't want to do it. And I don't Yeah, why would they care for us? This is my, my thing. Yeah, exactly. I, you know, I was like, you know, I'm not going to come from an angry place because, like, I want to help other Latinos, but like, if someone were to ask me, well, why aren't you helping more Indian Americans in the industry? It's like, oh, well, I think they should, yeah. right. but that's just not my calling. Right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, I don't connect to it. Yeah, and yeah. so like, rather than protesting, sure. I was like, okay, I should do this. Mm -hmm. Truthfully, the blame is on us. Right for not making more of a community with each other. Yeah, I agree with that. And so I feel like I, I agree that it is a problem that more people aren't doing enough, but why are you waiting for someone else to solve your problem? That's a great thing. You know? Oh. Well, one of my favorite Obama quotes is, we are the ones we've been waiting for. Yes, exactly. We're, all, we're, <laughs> we're, we're our I own like heroes, that. right? Right, right, right. right. So I, You're the leading man of your own show. <laughs> yes. I agree. Yeah. Of your life. It's so it's really on us. And something that happened to me growing up was I realized that I never really appreciated being Latin because that's just not the rhetoric that our culture is depicting. I agree, with, right? I agree. I mean, I don't know if this has happened to you, but I always feel like I love doing things with the Latin community. I don't know if this happened to you, but parents are always like, oh, pero no vayas a trabajar con los latinos. No, los latinos son, yeah. eso, eso es un reguero. Vete con los gringos. Los gringos, they got it going on. Like, they go work with them. Precisely, yeah, I mean. Yeah. There's Latin, never any pride. There's no pride, and it's because Latin America is a part of the world that historically has gone through a lot of pain, a lot of destabilization, like right. the last yeah. 400, years has not, have not been great for us in terms of outside forces coming in. You're right. It's almost embedded in our culture of like having unstable, um, you know, it not not cemented and grounding where it's like, you know, cold, white, calculated white people. <laughs> they, <laughs> they, got they, the, they stabilize right. really quickly. Yeah, I mean, you have a lot of people who either are trying to leave their countries or mm -hmm. have left yeah. their countries for a reason. Right. And so it's on these younger generations to really have a revisionist you know, perspective and be like, but this part of the world actually is beautiful. Right. But we have yeah. to start believing in it because if we're not the ones saying salsa dancing is just as like cool as tap right. dancing yeah. and river dancing, sure. like if we're not the ones who are like really elevating this sure. in the way that K-pop has been elevated, right. uh -huh. yeah. then it's not going to be cool. Well, yeah. I'm gonna say, cause we're gonna take a break right now, we're gonna be back with you, but I will say this, we need to start redefining the United States as a Latin nation. And Latin Nation, the new documentary show that I'm presenting and, and producing, airs on LA TV Mondays at 6 o'clock PST. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be right back on the Zoom with Calvary. We got more coming up. Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Just, don't leave your yeah. country. Don't, don't leave your cell phone. Don't leave your don't TV. Leave Just stay couch. right here, OK? <laughs> <laughs> Tell us, Ecuador, LA, like, okay, how did that happen? Why did you come out here? Oh, yeah. Well, obviously for school and all that good stuff. Yes, uh, it was a very, it was a very eclectic upbringing. I am actually half Persian. My dad, you know, moved to Ecuador after the Iranian Revolution. Oh wow! So I actually, I grew up in South America, but I grew up feeling similarly to how a lot of U.S. Latinos grow oh, up, wow. okay? which is feeling like an outsider in your own country, because Ooh. I was that kid who had this <laughs> really angry Persian dad. <laughs> <laughs> and you walk into my house, and it was like Iran in the 70s, because he'd been kicked out of his own country. Okay. So like a lot of immigrants who like left the country in, in circumstances that weren't ideal, he really wanted to retain his identity in sure. his house, because he's in another country where like everything else is very different, and he's mm -hmm. very proud of who he is. So I had to coach my friends being like, it's gonna be a lot of marble. <laughs> There's gonna be food everywhere. Wow. He will be, he's very loud, but he's not angry. Like, right. he's yeah. screaming, but he's not angry. Like, he's just trying to have a conversation Can with you. Sounds like my dad. Yeah. Sounds like what you yeah. yeah. And so, you know, it was, it was, it was this, this embracing that your, your culture is very different from the mainstream, right? Sure. Um, and laughing at it when it was it was a little ridiculous and being embarrassed by it when it didn't fit in, sure. right? And yeah. it wasn't cool. 
Um, but what I, but while I had this narrative in the back of my head, I grew up really not liking, you know, Latin America because these countries have been put through so much, mm -hmm. and these younger generations are being, you know, thrown into it where there's not a lot of economic opportunity, where there's so much, you know. D destabilized organizations that are just kind of trying to move forward, but you're just not given the same level of right. opportunity that a lot of people have in the United States. That's why people still want to come to this country. So I was lucky that I had the green card because my dad was kicked out of Iran. Mm -hmm. And so it was my first encounter with pri with the privilege that I have right. of being like, oh, I have this piece of paper. I didn't do, sh right. I didn't do anything for it. <laughs> um, and that opens a door of opportunities I didn't really work for. Right. Um, and so it really kind of made me realize just uh, how unfair like this whole world is and how you have to be like respectful and own up to the ways in which you kind of cheated and were able to cut through some steps to get to where you want to go. Right. So a lot of people watching the show that saw the last episode are going to get confused because we covered the movie, the show Messiah from Netflix. Have you oh, seen it? Oh yeah, I You look like it. a star a little bit. <laughs> I look more like Lin Manuel Miranda. Okay, oh, <laughs> actually, yeah, but the guy from Messiah is like a good-looking guy. He is, but he's like he might be fake Jesus. I don't want to be fake Jesus. You're the real Jesus. I'm real Jesus. Okay. <laughs> Authentic, 100. Let's not touch that. Topic. <laughs> Rats <laughs> fed Jesus. <laughs> sacrilege, sacrilege. And people have left the channel. <laughs> Kevin, what do you think about this whole initiative here in Hollywood with Air, uh, Mayor Eric Garcetti, who's doing the whole LA collab initiative to get more Latinos in front of yes. and behind the scenes? I think I think it's amazing. I, I think that it's. I think a, he stole your idea. I think you know, <laughs> I, I think that we're all starting to feel that we have to we have to really put our monies with our, where right. our mouths are. It can't just be a press statement anymore. Mm -hmm. Now we really have to em embrace our cultures. And I think that we're, we're all going through a very exciting place where, and again, this goes back to me just being like a Persian in Latin America and now being you know a Latina in the United States, is that something that did happen in Ecuador was that people were always very interested in my culture. And people were always mm. like, oh my god, this is Gabriel. He's Persian. Like You have to go to his house. Like His dad's cooking is amazing. Okay. Like That's how I was introduced okay, to a lot of my us. friends. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people talk to my, you refer to my dad as, they all called him Baba June, which is like daddy in Farsi. Like they really embraced that culture, you know, even though it wasn't theirs. And in the United States, I felt like you had to leave your culture at the door, right? Mm. And then kind of fit into this work setting right. that, that, yeah. that really whitewashed, you know, you in a lot of ways if you weren't white. But I feel like Hollywood has changed where I now feel again like, you don't leave your culture at the door. It's like I'm back in Ecuador a little bit and people want to learn about your perspective and your experience and they want to find the universal themes in those stories. Now what this uh, Mayor Garcetti initiative is going to do, that remains it's to be LA seen. It's called LA Collab. Yes, yeah, it's called LA Collab and they're trying to find ways to tell more Latin stories and bring more Latinos into the industry. I hope that it tackles issues that like are very, very problematic in our industry from the fact that we live in Los Angeles, there's a lot of Latinos here, they're right there. Yeah. None of them are getting internships right. here. None of them even fathom having a career in this industry. None right. of them see themselves ever like doing it. To them, it's an outside. That seems so weird to me though, because I'm from the East Coast and I'm like, for me, it was always like, as no matter if I was Latino or period, I was like, it's, the thing is to come to LA. Hollywood. Yeah. So for people here not to even realize realize that they can do things I mean, and this is where they crazy. have to do it. Like there's so Seems many people me, here and they, to them, it's like another world. And it's like, well, it was another world for me. I was right. in Ecuador. Wow, literally. How do yeah. you feel the same way I did when I was in the other side of the continent? And so I think that, how do we fix that, right? And it's so daunting. And I hope that the LA Collab tackle that because yeah i hope it's not just a political move in a, 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 a political charade like look you know uh where eric garcetti obviously is the mayor of los angeles and he has to uh you know so many of his constituents are latino and look i had this we had this press conference and i'm standing with a bunch of people from the industry and we intend to open up doors but i want to see those doors open up see at least with you you actually you know how you open up doors you people get introduced they talk you can create those connections, you know? I've, I've made a couple connections through through you, you know, uh, uh, from some of the get-togethers that you put together. So um, I, I, I hope that that this LA collab thing and, and, and the mayor of LA really put their money where their mouth is and are not just saying it to look a certain way. Yeah, I agree with you because I feel like, you know, I'm someone, someone asked me the other day, like, oh my God, in the Heights, are you really excited about it? And I'm like, I'm super excited about it, but yeah. I don't really celebrate, you know, these landmarks because to me, it's like, keep going. Right, what right. else, what else? I mean, What's like, next? it's great, 
but we shouldn't act like, okay, done, and that's right. our fix for the right. year. Like, right. no, I'm so happy for In the Heights, where's the next one, right? Like, we right. need to kind of seize the momentum, which is why with the networking organization that I have, it's a monthly thing. It's every single month. It's not one press conference and then maybe something will come out of it. There's a consistency to it, and I hope that the LA Collab brings that consistency. If somebody wants to get involved with it, yeah. where do they go? How, how do they find out about it? Do they just email you? Uh, well, we have we have an Instagram account. Um, What's Latin, the uh, handle? It's at Latin B. Um, okay. And you should just email latintrackingboard at gmail.com if you ever want to get involved. We're still broadening, you know, kind of our footprint in the industry. We're figuring out how we can best position ourselves ourselves in the industry because there's just so many issues with representation yeah. that you want to make sure that you're tackling things strategically but we're always happy for for any you know solicitations or opportunities so check us out cool Great. thank you awesome. so much for joining us thank, thank you, you. Yeah. That was so, that was so much <laughs> awesome and now we have, help me out with this name, because he's on a party of five. This is an amazing Roll show. Roll your R's and you will be able to say it, Poppy. So coming up after the break, we are going to be hanging out with Brandon Lara La Cuente. Cuente. OK, there we go. Oh. There you said it. I'm proud of you, Stick to the zoo. <laughs> some water please because this side is so damn hot we got Brandon <laughs> Arraguente thank you oh, 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 <laughs> oh my goodness I didn't, I didn't think that, that you were gonna drink it oh my god Jesus <laughs> <laughs> we're partying right okay. here go it's fine it's just fine <laughs> bro okay let's do this three two one wow. Wow. you need a okay. little okay. Guys, you want this for me though hey somebody get better pay for my dry cleaning Dennis but why did you drink it I was just being like ah I didn't know there was coffee in there. Okay, okay listen. Coffee. While you well, go ahead, just good. rock into the scene, Robbie. Walk into the scene. Thank and you, Eddie, Eddie don't cut any of this out, okay? <laughs> all right, while you, oh, while, Dennis, while you handle yourself, we'll, we'll talk about it. Thank um, you. Brandon, oh, first of all, you're Puerto Rican, right? Puerto Rican, second oh, generation. Okay. Amazing. Were you born and raised where in uh, San Juan? No, no, no. I was born in New York City. My parents were also born in New York City. Grandparents migrated from Puerto Rico when they were, uh, like, 30. Okay, wow. what part of you? Wow. Well, we're partying in the Bronx. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I want to for the Bronx, Bronx, though. I think so. Yeah. That's right. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. just Actually, I think my grandma used to go to church with her aunt. Really? Yeah. Wow. Because yeah. yeah. okay. you're from Jersey, right? I'm from New Jersey, yeah, right next door. East Coast awesome. people. Yeah. I know. Okay, so you guys, you might be too young to remember this, but there was a great show called Party of Five. You also might be too young to yeah. remember the original Party of Five. <laughs> I didn't watch it. Dennis did. I did watch a little bit of it, but you know, now I'm more into was this new. Was it just 20 minutes? But this, no, this particular storyline makes a lot of sense. It's super relevant. So why don't you tell us about the new Party of Five? Absolutely. Uh, like you said, it, it's very similar to the original, except for the fact that this is a bit more timely, where the parents, instead of dying like in the original, now they unfortunately are are deported, but I think the beauty of the show is that it's portraying things that are happening in our society today. Sure. Yes. So kudos to the creators for taking the risk and being courageous enough to tell the story. Nice, Dang, nice. Yeah, that's what I'm excited about. And you're actually working with um, Emily Dosta, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah she a, plays my sibling. A, yeah, it's a buddy of mine. I was yeah. like, oh, do. So, yeah. So how was it, working with her, working with everybody on set? It was wonderful. I mean, from the moment we all tested together in the casting room and stuff, we just instantly clicked. And uh, we've been growing ever since. You know, we, we were in Montreal filming the pilot. We wow. weren't sure if we were going to be picked up. We are freezing our butts off out cool. there. And then we had to wait a couple months until we knew if we got picked up. And in so the you guys shot the pilot only? Right, just the pilot. And then we had to wait like about five months to see if the show even got picked up. So yeah. in those five months, we would meet periodically for dinner. That's each nice. Each houses. And yeah, just to kind of bond Continue and whatnot. relationship. Bonding. Was Absolutely. that nerve wracking though? Because like a year passed between the pilot oh, and yeah. the series pickup. I'm like, oh my goodness, give me a job, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're kind of in limbo because you can't really, you know, uh, Party of Five is in first position, so you oh, can't wow. go out and really audition <sighs> for any of the shows, and you're just hoping that the show gets picked up. But when wow. it did, it's, it's, I mean, it's been a real blessing How so far. How many episodes is the first season? Uh, ten, including the pilot. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Man, that's. Three have already premiered, actually. So I know, we're how's it going one. with it's all going of that? It's going well, oh yeah, God. the critics seem to love it. Um, people tune in. The people who love the original have actually reached right. out. A lot of them have been very, very pleased with the product that we've put forward so far. Oh, good. So I'm happy to hear that, yeah. Tell us about your character. Uh, I play Emilio Acosta. He's the eldest sibling out of the five, okay. and he's a musician when we first meet him. He's super selfish in a way where he doesn't want anything to wreck his dreams of being a musician. And due to the parents' deportation now, he has to put aside his dreams and become the sole caretaker and the alpha and the leader of the family, uh, despite him wanting to. 
Wow. How old is your character? Uh, he's actually, I believe, 24, 25. Okay, because he looks like a, you, you're like a baby. I'm like, oh my goodness, for me to have to take care of my other four siblings, I can barely take care of a fish in a bowl. Imagine that. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> That's hilarious. He has a dead fish floating around right now. I, mean, I know, I mean, they don't. So, I mean, I feel like this character is a big departure from the character that you played on 13 Reasons Why, because that yeah. one was like just a big, you know, like a gym rat jock type of character. Mm -hmm. Did you have to? change your diet? Did you have to change the way that you exercise for this particular role? Well, actually, it's funny you asked that because prior to Booking Party of Five, I would go into audition rooms and I would always be known as Jeff. I would do the audition, I thought I killed it, and they would go, that was great, we loved you as Jeff and 13 Reasons Aww. Why. So they kept on knowing me as that, so no matter what role I went in for, mm -hmm. that's all they saw me as. Okay. So I said, you know what, enough of this, I grew my hair out, I grew facial hair, whatever, oh, wow. little facial hair I can grow, mm -hmm. and I grew it out, and I went into Party of Five, and they didn't see me as Jeff. They nice. saw me as this character, Emilio. So I think it really helped me kind of break away from that character of That's Jeff. incredible of like how you had to like think about how to disassociate yourself from a previous, you know, to, to, to have to strategize instead of, you know, just going in there and hoping that your performance is gonna be enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, I told you, you're gonna have to grow out of it. <laughs> because everyone know, knows you as Gabby from your YouTube page. No. You cannot no. act you, like anyone else. You don't else. even know me. You don't even know who I <laughs> yes, was. Yes, I was. No. You were the girl that dances with her dad on her YouTube page. My dad, I don't dance with my dad on the YouTube page. There was that page. one video. I don't know what video you're talking about. He Instagram. looks like a dad, but he's not my dad. Huh? <laughs> Are you talking about the Burcio? The old guy with the cowboy hat? Yeah, that's that not my be... dad. That's my friend. Oh my like, god. What are you talking about? Like oh my gosh. Anyways, no, I'm don't... just gonna go bald. That's what I'm gonna do. Oh, I, just, wow, I decide I'm gonna go bald. Sinead O'Connor and everything. I mean, I think some people have off. done that, and American. it's just yeah. like, like their career just took off. After Charlize they Theron did it there you for go. Uh, Monster Ball, right? Oh, she shaved her eyebrows and stuff. Okay. And she, yeah. yeah, I'm just gonna do oh, it because clearly crazy. that needs to be. But happening. when you shave your eyebrows, how long does it take for it to grow back, though? Oh, I don't know. No, no, I, I, I thread them. I got them threaded. Yeah, and they grow back in a week. It hurts a little bit, but beauty is pain. It is. You know what I'm saying? Wait, so Brandon, did you already finish filming the entire first season? We have, yeah. We okay. actually shot the entire season. Uh, we wrapped it today on my birthday, actually. And we uh, now we're waiting to see if we get picked up for a season two. I'm oh, sure I have a will. feeling you if will you be. I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. Sure. Yeah. So now that you are not on set, does that mean that you have more time to plan the big day, the wedding, the bachelor uh, party? <laughs> I knew that was coming. Ah! <laughs> uh, you know what, though? Um, He's me, the personal question guy. Yeah. Me, I like it. Me and my fiance have been together for about four years now. Wow. And, you know, I, as everybody knows, I finally popped the question. And uh, I think for now, we're just going to enjoy engagement. And okay. you know, I, I kind of like the fact that I get to call her my fiance. I'm mm. using that to my That's advantage, cute. you know? Yeah. Yeah. You can be a fiance for a year or two. Yeah. Wait, is there a ring? No, no, this is my ring. This is okay, my that's just She like, actually got me that, though. Is that like a mood ring or something? No, 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 not a mood. It's like an Indian skull. It's, it's cool. Okay. It was a Wait, birthday gift. Nice. Yeah, she got it for me a couple years oh, that's ago. That's dope. Yeah, yeah, I like, I like jewelry. You <laughs> yeah. need some. Yeah, I so, need to do the. the no bachelor party on the horizon. Uh, soon, soon. Okay. One day it'll happen, yeah, but. Think about us, yeah. please. Yeah, planning, planning. <laughs> we're okay. gonna plan it. Oh, wait, okay. but we, you, we have, wait, uh, before, before that, um, 13 Reasons Why. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you were talking about how, how to uh, run your character, Jeff. At the same time, what did that do for you in terms of your acting career? Oh, was yeah. That, that was oh, your first man. role, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I was on a show prior to that called Bloodline, and, and I got to work with such great wait, actors. Wait, the one that takes place in the Keys? Yeah. What, what character did you play in I that one? I played the son of uh, uh, Kyle Chandler. That's right, but in the second season, or at the end, the end of the first season? I was in all three. Like, I was just, I was there. I was there in the background, but I was there. Okay. Yeah, I had like a bowl hair. Once again, I changed my look. I had wow. a bowl haircut. People didn't really recognize me. After that, shaved my head and became Jeff. After that, grew my hair Jesus, out. Jesus, that's working for you. Because I'm from South Florida. You guys shot on the keys, though. Yeah, right? we did. We did shot on the keys. Awesome. Aren't yeah. the keys incredible? Oh, they're beautiful. It's another world. They're beautiful. All right, we're going to talk more. Or we're going to be right back on the zoo after this break. Sorry to cut you off. <laughs> Brandon, let's all say it together. La Raguente. We're back on the zoo with Brandon Lara Cuente. He doesn't have a middle name because his dad told him, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Your last name has 11 letters. Wait, going back to the Keys, did you guys live there for a while? Well, we did. Uh, my parents live in uh, Orlando, Florida, so oh, nice. we would drive about six hours every time I had to film wow. and then drive Jeez. back. But you would stay for how long uh, uh, for it, filming? It depends uh, how long the episode I was, how, how much they wanted to incorporate my Where character. Where was it shot exactly? Uh, Isla Morada Keys. Isla Morada, oh, so nice. not that far into. No, okay, no, no, yeah, no, no, kind not, of not right the very there. bottom. Yeah, yeah. Like that's crazy. Vacation destination. All right, now you had a bunch of questions you looked at I had a bunch of questions. And you said about them already. Well, no, because I, I was, you know, watching interviews and whatnot, and I'm like, so they used to 
I can't. I just can't imagine this guy being bullied as a kid. I'm like, they, oh, yeah. did they really what? bully you? Like, but, but for what? For being an actor? No, it, it was a couple things. Uh, going through high school, it was for being an actor. They, they, for some reason, if you were part of the the, the Fest Free Society right mm -hmm. away, they mocked you. They mocked okay. you because you know I was a sports guy. I was okay. in baseball my entire life. Oh wow. And I was also bullied. It, it's it's so weird. I was bullied by my own people. I was on a baseball team, mm -hmm. and the majority of the baseball team were my people, Puerto Ricans okay. or just Latinos in general. Very Caribbean. Baseball is a baseball very is Caribbean. Yeah, 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 it, is, it, it is. is. But I found that because I didn't look and I didn't talk like them, you know, I wasn't born there, so my, my Spanish wasn't as good as them, right. or I was, I was, I have fair skin, you know, I didn't look like them, they picked on me and they kind of put me, you know, I felt like an outsider among my own people. Mm. Wow. Why, they, yeah. oh, why do we do that to each other? Mm. I don't know. Why? It happens I don't know. Well, what happened? Explain the thespian thing, and then, and then when you told your baseball uh, friends, oh, I'm doing the thespian thing, they're like, ugh. Exactly, exactly. and even the baseball coach at the time, who was uh, the coach, he said, you have to pick, you can't be a part oh. of two. Even though the schedules worked out great, because yeah. it was it was baseball, then thespian society afterwards, it just, he, they made it very difficult for me. third base. Third base and outfield and catcher, yeah. Okay. Yeah, wow. you, you've done your research. Well, because you're tall. <laughs> yeah. If you're not a tall guy, you play third base. Isn't it the way well, it is? I had no clue. Wow. Yeah. I was like, wow. Well. Not that you never see a tall shortstop. It's called short for a reason. Yeah. There you go. Oh, All thank right, you. Thank you, Alberto. Did you ever watch Bloodline? <laughs> no. Did you ever watch 13 Reasons Why? And God, don't you know how to lie when there's a guest here? Just say yes. <laughs> and you're like, I'm crazy, no, honestly. No, I'm not gonna lie because what if he starts asking me questions? Or like, what do you mean? Then you right. keep lying. Like, then the oh, lie gets bigger and bigger and bigger. I saw were your parts. So literally, I was just like, okay, let me look him up. Oh, there he is. Oh, he's doing good. <laughs> oh my God, you are hilarious. <laughs> your research, I appreciate it. I did my research on him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, but hey, I'm oh, curious. God. Did you yes. ever want to be like a baseball player at one point? I did. That was my oh. first passion and my oh, first really? dream. I really didn't enjoy acting because of the ridicule that would come. I'm with oh, it. Oh, wow. So I, my mom, it's funny, she would take me to auditions and she says, you have a gift, you're so good at it, but I don't want to do it. I'm going to, you know, uh, mess up the audition on purpose. And she said, you better not. And I would go in there, and of course my ego couldn't do that, so I would go in there and I would book the job. And she's like, wow. you, you have a gift. Why, why are you not embracing it? And I couldn't admit it to myself or to anybody else. It was because I cared about what others thought of me first. Mm. Yeah, I wanted to be a ball player. Listen, but did you want to be a double-A ball player or do you want to be... Whatever uh, you know, whatever character you are on a Netflix show, on a major network show, what the hell is it? Double A. It's, it, there's like a single A, double A, triple A, and then the major leagues. Oh, honey, That's I the know. minor really leagues. Know. That's it. Major league baseball. He's yeah, yeah, be, yeah, he yeah. be a baseball player in his next show. The next thing there's he There's a bunch of, listen, the, the, he speaks perfect English, except for there's a handful of English words that he has no idea what to <laughs> like, I can say la raguente, okay? That's all that matters. Tourniquet. Do you know what a tourniquet is? A what? A gurney. Do you know oh, what a gurney. gurney. I heard a tourniquet. No, I'm going through a bunch of different words. I know, me. Pick, don't. pick no, a crazy no, no, English no. word to see if he knows. Just off the top of your head. Um, 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 um. Uh, juxtaposition. Yes, I do know that word. What yeah. is? <laughs> so define it. Okay, see, define it. Lying. Define juxtaposition. Like that. Isn't that like the position of the juxta? Oh God. <laughs> close. Close. <laughs> Gabs, can you? Do you know what a juxtaposition is? What? <laughs> I can't even pronounce that word. The what? Juxtaposition. 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 Yes. It's not just a position. It's a juxtaposition. Yes. Juxtaposition. <laughs> okay. You're so funny. Oh my goodness gracious. What am I gonna do with you guys? I don't guys? know. I was gonna say you look say this word. I yeah. The Griffin. That's not the Griffin. That's yeah, that's what it is. The Griffin, yeah. Oh yeah, that's Gosh, what it is. These books look so educational. <laughs> <laughs> they do. They look oh, like Greek have they been read? Have they, they have not. They're just no. they're brand new. Props, yeah. These are new Would props you, on the set. We, we could, we props because reading. I haven't read any of these books. I don't Would you know. like to read? I mean, um, no. <laughs> Wait. So yeah. I was gonna invite you to you know to dinner after the show, Brandon. But I'm right. little, but I don't. I'm a little afraid because you know I heard that you know one time you what is it you walked out on the chat. Oh, Lord. <laughs> what? Wait a minute. No, no, no. no. I don't know. We were playing Never Have I Ever, and they asked me that question. And I think I have. Yeah, one time. Do you, you grew up in the Bronx? Unknowingly, though. How do you grow up in the Bronx? How do you unknowingly do that? How do you unknowingly eat? No, he's, like, he's oh. trying to save himself now. And I thought like, somebody oh. else covered the bill. Dude, oh. in, in youth, I assumed. Yes, oh, listen. And it was just him eating by himself, that's right. Correct. Okay. When you grow up in the Bronx, you gotta do something bad so that you can pretend to be bad to not get bullied he on the street. Cred. So you gotta, but, but you gotta have street credit to yourself, so you gotta do something delinquent. Right. That's how like it is. walking out on a check? I don't know about that. Better than beating somebody up or stealing, you know, somebody's car? that's true. You know? He's right. He's point. Louise. He had a point. Well, I don't know. I can never. You know what I used to do when when I was young and I didn't have, when I first moved out. Uh, um, I used to go to like the supermarket with the bag and just fill out the bag and then just kind of like walk out like unknowingly. What? Really? What? How in the what? world did you get away with that? Bro, because I just I just have blinders on. Did you bring your out. own bag though? Yeah. 
Okay. But it was, it was the bag from the, the yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Smart, smart. Well, that's right, because no tiene nada para Publix in Miami, Florida is going to be calling LA TV <laughs> after the show. Yeah, we'd like to, we'd like them to pay back, you know, that all the hilarious. sandwiches and stuff and the oh, ham wow. and cheese. That this is when I first met. I was like 19. Oh, pub this sub. recently oh. happened with Target. I was shopping with my boyfriend. And oh, then, like, we're all incriminating ourselves, <laughs> okay, folks? <laughs> the truth Watch out. It was such an accident. Like, but you know what? It wasn't our fault. It was also like the lady, the, how did she not see the, the hoodie on me and not ask for it? Like, we just walked out. Wait, you walked out with a hoodie on? I had, a, I had a beanie on, and I walk out, I was like, oh my god, we didn't pay for this. He's like, oh, we better start Run. walking. Walk faster. I, like, I walked okay. out of Costco one time with two, like, you know, like, what is it, buckets of uh, vitamins. No, va vitamins, vitamins. They, I, I put them underneath the thing, and I didn't realize that I had taken them. That, yeah, that had Guys, yeah. all right, listen, on behalf of everyone right <laughs> now, we want to appreciate, okay, not appreciate, we want to apologize to the restaurants, supermarkets, and, uh, you know, general stores that we've accidentally walked out on bills. <laughs> it will never happen again. It happens. You guys write this off anyway. You guys make enough. Yeah, exactly. True. They're major corporate. <laughs> no, just don't ever steal from a mom and pop shop. Yeah. Um, Brandon Lara Cuente, mm -hmm. dude, it's been a pleasure having you on the Thank show. Party yeah. five. We're gonna be Thank supporting you. people. We're gonna be watching it. Season and two is gonna back. happen. I already know it. I, I know see it. I start. see it on my vision board. Yeah. Awesome. It's on my vision yes. board. Yes. I have everyone mean, out there, follow us okay. uh, at Ali TV Networks on Instagram, Twitter. You know, follow us. Follow Brandon. They already follow him. He's okay. got like over a million people that follow him. Right. Okay. I need Second to get it. Let's, get, let's get on this thing. Get those endorsement deals, honey. <laughs> so, Tony, is there anything else you want to add or anything, you know? Uh, no, no, just please uh, tune in every Wednesday to party uh, on Freeform uh, to Party 5. And I uh, thank you guys for having awesome. me. And high five. I enjoyed it. High five, yes. Oh, yeah, we're uh, doing that. Uh, 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 that's you've been watching the zoo. Peace. Don't drink water when you're next to Brandon, okay? <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs>